Hi, I'm Emery with uh, Welsh Construction Remodeling Company, and today we're going to dem do a demonstration on installing chair rail. First thing you want to do with chair rail is determine the height you want to be at uh, on the wall. And in this case, I think we're going to do 34 and a half inches to the bottom of the uh, the bottom of the molding. And then we want it to be level, so we got our Stanley level here. So we'll start from this point. What we have here is a commercial duty uh, miter box for cutting the uh, crown molding that we're going to be installing today. This is a piece of the crown molding we're going to uh, be using. It's actually a solid pine material that's been primed already and ready for paint. We're going to be installing this um, with a uh, nailing it to the wall and probably use a little bit of caulk in there and we'll caulk it in when we're done. I'm going to demonstrate a uh, cut now, a typical 45 degree miter cut. I'm going to set your saw at 45 degrees. This particular model saw's got the, actually got the angle that written on the um, gauge here. And as you can see, this is what your cut's going to look like. This particular, on this particular installation, we're going to be doing a cope cut, which we're going to use this line right here to make our saw cut to fit this into the piece, the other piece of crown, I mean the other piece of uh, chair rail, it's going to be running this way uh, into it. What we're going to do now is try to locate our studs in the wall. Now we could use a stud finder, we can use a hammer and nail. In this case, there, you can take your hammer and just go along the wall you'll hear when it starts to get a little bit more solid, just right in this area right here, so we'll mark a little line in that general vicinity. And then if your walls were framed properly, they should be 16 inches on center. So we'll just measure off of that at 16 inches. And your stud should be approximately there, but you can take your hammer and check it. You can hear it's solid in that, right, in that area right there. We know there's going to be a stud here in the corner because obviously they need a stud there to hang the sheetrock up. Let's see if we've got one along this wall. So I'm getting one right here. And we know we're going to have one here, here, there. As you can see, I've back cut this piece of molding here that we're going to run our next piece into it this way. I uh, prefer to cut them at a 22 and a half degree angle. I know some people like cut them at a 45, but I feel I get a little bit tighter seam when I can do a 22 and a half degree angle. Let's go ahead and put this piece up there, see how we did. We're going to use that line as the bottom of the trim. Now I want to transfer these marks down just a little bit so I can see them when I put, hold the molding up there. I know where that one's going to be. We'll go right there with that. So we'll hold our molding up there like that. Notice here in the corner I've got a square cut. It's just butting the wall. The piece that's going to be running into this one's going to be coped into it. So let's go ahead and drill a hole here in the fat spot of the molding. Put a nail right in there. Get our next one. Got one here. And one in the corner. I'm not going to sink these nails in all the way yet. We'll come back, set these with a nail set. Okay, here we have the piece of chair rail molding that we're going to cope and cut, fit this into the uh, piece that we've already installed on the wall. Uh, first thing you want to do when coping is you want to cut this back cut this one at 45. That's going to give you a line to cut follow with your coping saw to make the cut. Let's do that. We'll start here like this. Hold it tight against the fence there. 
Set your miter box at 45 degrees. Make sure you're clearing it. Everything's good. Let's move back just a little bit. Now this is what we end up with. We've got a nice clear line that we can follow along there with our coping saw. You can see, I can see it pretty well because it's been painted white. Now you can also take your pencil and mark along that line if you like just to kind of define that line a little bit better for you so you can follow it a little easier with your saw. Let's start out with the coping saw here. We'll make the cut. You see you've got your line here. Your top you want to be square this way because that's going to butt right into the piece that we've got up there right now. Then you want to follow this little line along here. When you do that you actually want to try if you can't undercut a little bit. This being 90 degrees, this will actually undercut that a little bit so when you butt this thing to there, you know your little point on the end here is going to butt tight to the molding that you have. Let's start and go ahead and cut it. And then just take your time and let the saw do the work. This is where you're going to want to use your jeweler saw because we've got this fine radius to do around here and this, will, this blade being so small and narrow will make that turn without a problem. And get it started in there. Just got to knock this little notch out of here. You can take your file, any little spots that your saw didn't, couldn't quite get, just clean that up a little bit, back cut a little bit, that looks pretty good, that looks good. And then, you can take a piece, make sure you got it good and tight, just butt it up to a, another piece of molding and see how you did on your cut. That's what you need. Now what we'll do is we'll go in there and fit this into the piece of molding that we've already installed and then mark our length and cut that off and uh, we'll be ready to go. This is the cope that we did out in the shop. You can see it kind of cut this to con conform to the piece that we've got run up there now. So this will butt right into this and give you a nice tight joint when you're done. Once you get your piece in there, push back tight mark it on here. I like to make it just a little bit tight so when I install this I actually kind of wedge it in there a little bit and actually pushes my piece that I've got up here already back tight into the corner that way. All right let me take this out in the shop and cut this and we'll be ready to install this one. Okay we've cut this piece of molding here to go butts into the piece there actually where we've got it coped on the corner here. I'm going to fit that in there. I've cut this thing just so I what I've feel is a little bit tight on there. I want it a little bit tight so I can tap that back, make sure this piece of molding is back tight against the wall and this is going to kind of force that back in there. So what we're going to do is place that on there. And you see it doesn't quite go back yet, but we're going to get it lined up with our level line that we put on there earlier. Give it a tap in this way. Tap it back. Make sure we're on the line. Just a little bit. So we're tight here, tight here. It's ready to nail to the wall. Nail it back. Get our nail in the corner. You want to use your nail set to just drive the nails below the surface a little bit. We're now going to finish off our chair rail molding job with a little bit of painter's caulk. We're going to add to the top of it where it's uh, touching the wall along there and we'll actually hit the nail holes 
uh, with a little bit of caulk too to fill them in. Uh, I've got the caulk here, I've got my caulk gun and I've also got a damp rag for cleaning up the excess caulk. And what you want to do is just cut yourself very small tip on this to give you a very small bead, just about the size you would need. Obviously it's fairly tight against the wall right here, so we're just going to use a very small bead for this. Now what you want to do is try to keep this caulk to a minimum. The less caulk you have in there, the less you have to clean up. Just get it nice and slow and give yourself a nice smooth edge along there. Take your finger. Kind of smooth it out a little bit, make sure it's all nice and tight in that crack. Do the same thing along this wall. Take the wet rag here, smooth it in there a little bit. That little bit of excess you've got on my finger, I can actually use that to fill the nail holes in there. You can take your wet rag and just clean them off a little bit. Give that time to dry and we'll be ready for paint.